Giuseppe here. Um, I uh, work for a little company called IBM and uh, I'm happy to talk to you today about contributing to open source. Um, it's, it's kind of core to uh, IBM and uh, you know we've been involved in open source for a really long time. Uh, dating back to uh, maybe even before uh, the, the Linux Foundation, the Eclipse Foundation, like early open source uh, kind of stuff, and have been continuing to do that for, uh, for many years. And um, we have a lot of folks who are you know, deeply involved in, in the open source space, uh, the, the work, the code, the um, community, the uh, foundations, uh, things like that. Um, I am, uh, I, I have been a part of the Node.js community for some time and was a part of the Node.js Foundation. I also helped to merge the Node.js Foundation and the JS Foundation into the newly formed OpenJS Foundation, which, you know, newly formed is a little, um, uh, it's been a couple of years now, so, um, but the OpenJS Foundation is where I spend a lot of time, my time now. Uh, in addition to the the Node.js space, and um, I'm the chairperson of the Cross Project Council, which is the the kind of advisory committee, the top uh, uh, committee in the foundation that helps get things done on a daily day uh, day to day basis. Um, you know, trying to help projects and be uh, provide uh, things of value to projects as well as the community and and our uh, our our member companies. Uh, but really focused on on what what would best serve the the, the projects in their communities. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I spend my days. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you today about uh, contributing to open source. Um, you know, perhaps uh, some of you are already doing it. Some of you are perhaps new to it. Um, I'll, I'll try to touch on a variety of things here to to make the talk. Uh, interesting to a variety of people. So let's um, let's first talk about like etiquette, I suppose. Um, you know, it could be daunting to get involved in open source, but I I, I, I encourage you to do so. I, I believe if you're watching this talk, then that you have an interest there. Um, you know, I think just kind of getting over the first hurdle. Uh, or two, you you know you you kind of get in the door and, and and realize that it's not as daunting as it may seem at first. Oftentimes, uh, typically the communities are very welcoming, and uh, they 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 encourage new uh, contributors and try to have things in place so that new contributors can be uh, you know can easily get involved. Um, you know, I think the number one thing is to, to be courteous and, and, and respectful and considerate and remember that, you know, we're all just humans trying to get along here and write some code and, and build some applications and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, just, you know, be nice, um, and be respectful and, and, um, you know, I guess sort of along those lines to look at the ways in which the project is set up and um, the, the, the things that are in place to help you uh, along your path and contributing to the project. So contributing guidelines, obviously being one, uh, check out the procedures and the guidelines there. Um, sometimes there are specific ways that they want commit messages, for example, or um, you know you'll want to get your project set up with with the um, with things like uh, style formatting and such, you know, tabs versus spaces, for example, or um, you know what have you. You want to uh, you basically want to have a as little friction as possible in getting your code uh, merged upstream. And so being aware of those processes and guidelines and such is really helpful. And when you do uh, submit your code, you want to spend the time in pull requests talking about the code um, and what's happening there and not spend any time talking about styling or 
um, commit messages, for example, or, um, you know, uh, semicolons or not, or what have you, you know, try to get aligned with how the project functions and then focus on contributing uh, in that manner. Um, and then, you know, in pull requests, again, remember, we're all just humans. And so, you know, uh, maintainers, uh, I encourage you to be constructive in your criticism and your critiques and, and um, uh, contributors, you know, uh, uh, act accordingly as well. Um, uh, be courteous and know that, um, you know, by and large, these sorts of conversations are meant to be. Uh, productive and um, you know work work through these uh, issues for lack of a better term. So that's a little bit on etiquette. Um, you know another thing we can talk about is is when you're looking at projects to get involved in, uh, you want to kind of take a look at the community health of the project itself. Um, the best way or one way I suppose to do that is to go to the GitHub uh, repo and under the Insights tab, there is a community section and uh, GitHub helpfully tries to show you um, what the community has considered important in terms of a project being welcoming and uh, healthy. Uh, so, you know, number one, a code of conduct. Um, you wanna make sure there's one in place. Uh, it's best to kind of look at it and examine um, what's in the code of conduct. Uh, there are a few that are <clears throat> templates or starting points or, or, or um, you know, like the, the uh, contributor's covenant is a very common one that you can basically uh, copy and, and um, uh, pull into your project. Uh, that's the one that we primarily use at the uh, OpenJS Foundation and such. Uh, in that section, you also find the contributing guidelines uh, is another one. You'll want to check the license to make sure that it's a, a project that you'll um, you know want to be contributing to. Um, there may be rules that if you're uh, a part of a company as to what kind of licenses uh, you're able to contribute into in uh, terms of open source. Another kind of shortcut to check out is if you go to a repo on uh, GitHub, um, you know, it's github.com slash org slash project. If you also add a slash contribute to the end of that URL, so for example, github.com slash node.js uh, slash node slash contribute, um, there's a, 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 a auto-generated page that'll come up um, and highlight good first issues and um, typically it'll highlight the um, uh, contributing guidelines and the code of conduct. Uh, so that's, that's really helpful too. And uh, it's a good segue to mention, if you're looking to get into a new project, uh, that's a great place to look is to go to the issues, look for the label good first issue, um, help wanted is another common one. Um, you know, try to, to suss out any labels that the project has deemed uh, appropriate for new contributors coming in and getting involved. So that's that's um, you know another another place to uh, to look at. So we'll just take a quick moment to talk about like the GitHub open source contributing workflow, and um, I'll talk through this a little bit. But you can certainly uh, look on the internet for for more. Uh, in-depth guidance along this sort of flow, uh, but the the for for folks new to this, um, basically you find the project that you want to uh, contribute to. You will uh, fork the project into your uh, space on GitHub, and then uh, clone it locally. Um, and then what I typically do is I go into that directory. And I list the remotes uh, that are there, and, and uh, you know, usually when you clone a, a repository, uh, you just have your origin, uh, which is set to your um, uh, fork of that repository. So you'll want to add an upstream uh, uh, destination for your repo. So you know, git remote add upstream, and then the um, uh, 
Git URL or uh, Git, um, what do you call it? Path. Uh, and then you'll see if you do a list of remotes again, you'll see an origin and an upstream, and one should point to your fork. The origin should point to your fork. The upstream should point to the uh, upstream repo. Um, if you're really new to, 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 to Git, then you know you want to do things like configure username and, and email and such. Um, but again, you know, use the internet machine to, to find all that stuff. So once you have the repository locally and you have set your upstream um, and you're ready to do some coding, the process typically is to create a branch, you know, so get checkout dash B, dash B my branch, um, and you can set some tracking uh, to upstream master if you desire. Uh, it's a common practice. I just I just do get checkout branch and <clears throat> start a new branch and get rolling. Um, so you've got your branch now. You're in your branch, uh, no longer in master, but in your branch that you're going to do your work. Write some code. Um, add your files. You know, get add uh, period or get add specific files that you want to add to your commit. <clears throat> uh, run git commit. Uh, you can do dash m and, and put your message in line or, or have um, your, your terminal prompt you for a, a message. Um, and then you'll uh, put your push your changes to your fork to your uh, origin. And then from there you can open a pull request that will compare your changes to uh, the upstream. And you know once you submit that pull request, then the process begins where the maintainers of that repository will review your code and comment on it. And um, you know whenever the process is there, uh, hopefully you end up in a spot where your code will be merged into the repository. So that's great. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of the typical uh, the typical flow. Um, you know, one one way that uh, I think is very common for this sort of flow to happen is if you are um, looking at a new uh, project to, to to use. Maybe you're not even thinking about contributing necessarily, and this happened to me one time. So um, a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, Gatsby was um, uh, something that I was considering using for a project and so I wanted to learn more about it and I started to read the documentation and um, noticed a thing or two that were pretty minor but I was like well you know I, I might as well uh, contribute it back and, and make some some uh, updates here so I went through that flow you know uh, forked it cloned it set my upstream and uh, created a branch. And then as I worked through the documentation, um, whenever I found something that I thought, uh, you know, some, I think one or two things were like grammatical. Uh, so I fixed those. And then uh, if I was working through something and it didn't, it wasn't clear to me, um, and I thought I could add value to the community and the project by making it more clear, um, I, would, I would make those changes in the documentation. And then, um, you know, I, I got to a logical stopping point and had a few changes, uh, put it all together in a commit and pushed it up. And um, uh, the, 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 the lead maintainer there, his name is escaping me now, but uh, was super nice. Um, one of the things that I had corrected um, was like kind of auto-generated and so that uh, we, we discarded. Uh, but the other changes, uh, he was happy to take upstream and, uh, again, was very polite and was really, uh, very easy to work with. And, um, you know, I appreciated, uh, contributing there. And so that's like a common workflow that, that, uh, people might find themselves in, uh, just kind of going through some, some documentation. And it's a real easy way to get involved because you don't have to, you know, have that stress of, I don't know this project super well and is this really the right thing or whatever you're like i'm in fact coming to the project uh fresh and contributing to documentation like that is really helpful because you're fresh eyes and typically uh you know a, a, a 
non insignificant uh, amount of people coming to the documentation um, will will be new to it as well, and so adding that context and and such, uh, and, and making it more uh, digestible for new folks, I think is um, you know really valuable. So that's a great way to to, to start to get involved, right? Um, so let's talk about uh, you know contributing to open source isn't just code, right? Um, I think a lot of people, that's what they think of first, and that makes sense. But there are other ways to contribute to open source as well. So documentation is one of them, uh, which we just kind of talked about a little bit. Uh, sometimes, um, oftentimes, the project's website is uh, in the organization as well. And so if you see something on the website that uh, needs, you know, there's an error or what have you, uh, you can contribute there. Um, in fact, uh, the Node uh, project has uh, had a long-running um, uh, set of work to redesign the Node.js.org website. And it's coming along pretty well, but we still need some help. And so if you're interested in uh, Gatsby and, and React and um, you know doing kind of front-end work, uh, helping implement this design and making some uh, improvements along the way, uh, please, by all means, get involved. That's a that's a great way to uh, help the Node.js project is to help work on the new website. Um, if you go to the Node.js org uh, repository, you should see um, a repo for Node.js.dev. Is that right? Let me look that up really quickly. Uh, yep, Node.js.dev. We call the 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 working group. Um, the web design uh, redesign, website redesign um, working group. Are we a working group? I can't recall now. Uh, where am I looking? Anyway, uh, regardless, <laughs> uh, that's a great place to to get involved. So if you have any interest there, uh, please get involved. Um, you know, in terms of other ways to get involved in open source. You know, project management of some sort. Uh, you know, is is sometimes needed. Uh, the website redesign work. You know, having somebody to help kind of uh, manage the work there and to have uh, visibility over the overall effort and keep on track for like MVP work and such. Um, you know, that's that's a need that we have. I'm sure uh, there are other. Uh, projects that are similar and I think even along those lines you know helping a project to manage the work that is going on there um, is is helpful so like in node we have a, a triage role um, express uh, establish something as well and um, being able to help uh, triage issues and pull requests and uh, things of that nature is um, valuable uh, really valuable so that's something to consider. And then just even, um, you know, getting involved in uh, social aspects or community or outreach or things like that. Um, for a project like Node, we have, a, we have um, efforts, uh, initiatives along those lines as well. Uh, and mentorship is another one. Um, and... Uh, you know, so those things are really valuable. Uh, I'm also reminded of we have an internationalization project as well that's that's doing um, not only doing translations um, of documentation and such, but also the tooling that goes involved that that is involved in in managing those translations and those contributions and such. So, you know, that's another great area that uh, someone could get involved. Um, either the translation work itself or the work on the tooling that uh, helps us manage the translation work. Uh, so those are a few few um, you know ideas in terms of um, you know not just working on the core aspect of the project but the things that sort of go along with it as well. Um, a couple other things that come to mind, uh, the release team for, for Node, that's really important work. Uh, the build working group in Node is another one. Uh, we just started a initiative uh, called uh, Examples, so trying to put together uh, common use cases and such um, 
using uh, common tooling and, and, and frameworks and what have you. So that's another great place to get involved. So there's, there's lots uh, going on uh, in the node space, and I uh, imagine that a lot of other communities have similar uh, concerns and needs and such. So, so those are some ideas. Um, you know, another thing that I wanted to talk to you all about is how to do open source on company time. Um, and there are a number of ways that I've seen this done in the past. Um, there's this concept of open source Fridays. I think if you, again, look on the internet, you'll, you'll find, uh, something, um, I think there's a whole website dedicated to, to that, um, initiative. And uh, whether it's like formal or informal, it's a great way to, to kind of get your team, uh, your organization, your company more involved in open source is to take a Friday, you know, maybe once a month or the way we used to do it at Adobe, which was really um, great. And we kind of had this slotted into, for a time, we had this slotted into our um, sprint schedule where Fridays were always set aside uh, to do non-sprint work. And so... Uh, we alternated every Friday between, um, you know, one Friday would be uh, crushing bugs and, and technical debt um, and working on those sorts of things that were outside of our sprint uh, efforts. And then the, the opposite Friday would be working on open source, which we, you know, used a lot of open source tooling. Um, we tried to contribute back. We even had done some hiring through open source. Uh, the people that we were working with in the communities. Um, so we, you know, really um, were, were dedicated uh, to the open source efforts. And so we would just alternate, you know, uh, the first Friday would be Bug Bash, the second Friday would be open source. And, you know, we just uh, uh, alternated those. And so that's a great way to, to, to kind of slot in some company time for uh, open source work. Um, I'm super fortunate that I, I work at IBM and we really value um, doing open source. We value uh, being a part of the community. We value the uh, level playing field that uh, foundations and open source work uh, creates. Um, and we use open source in um, a lot, uh, the majority of our, our products and such, our platforms. So, um, Open source is super important, and I'm lucky that I work at a place that, um, you know, they pay me to, to focus on that stuff. So if you can, the best way is to get into a company that, that, that shares that, um, that value as well. Um, the one thing I want to double back on uh, in terms of Node.js is that, you know, some projects are easy to, to get involved in, and the... Um, the, the, the barrier to entry is fairly low. That's maybe not as much the case with Node.js. I mean, I think um, there are uh, really great things about Node.js in terms of getting involved in open source. I think, you know, the, 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 the one that comes to mind immediately for me is that it's a really fantastic community of people Um who are really passionate about the work and the platform. And, um, and so that part is really great. Uh, but, but getting Node.js up and running and um, knowing how to contribute and where to contribute and what to contribute is maybe not as easy as other projects. Um, and that, that may be similar to other kind of uh, platforms or um, projects like Node.js. Um, but my point is, the, or the point that I'm trying to get to is uh, the way that I recommend people getting involved into Node.js is to look at the uh, working groups and the teams that, uh, as well as the initiatives that are being worked on and try to get involved there. Um, and then through that, you can start to contribute. And so an example is, uh, like I mentioned, the website redesign work. You know, there's, there are, um, uh, are they weekly meetings now? Like most of our Node.js meetings are, are bi-weekly, every other week. The website redesign team might have started meeting weekly to try and keep progress really moving forward. Um, but essentially, um, we've, we've, we've tried to do our work in the Node.js space uh, for, for many years as 
publicly and transparently as possible. And so, um, number one, the calendar is public. It's a Google calendar that you can subscribe. I have it integrated into my personal calendar. Um, and so I see all the meetings that are happening, uh, the, the build meeting, the releases meeting, the, um, you know, the uh, website redesign meeting, ComCom, TSC. Um, I think TSC is maybe the only one that's not uh, totally public. Um, but uh, all the other meetings are public and um, observers are, are welcome to join and see what's going on and that's the that's the best way to get involved because you can um you can you know lurk for lack of a better term um observe uh what's going on what the focuses are uh where the team is is trying to go and when you feel comfortable um you can offer to help um, or you can start to follow some of the issues and the pull requests. You know, another way that we try to be uh, public and transparent is to do all of our work in, in uh, GitHub. Um, so documentation, issues, pull requests, all those things are publicly available, easy to contribute to, and uh, also easy to just kind of follow along and see what's going on and get involved. And the good thing about getting involved in one of these teams or working groups is you start to know the people that are there. And um, again, they're, they're by and large uh, really good people who are happy to have other folks get involved and happy to support them in, in getting involved. Um, and so you can volunteer to do a, a bit of work and then you have the folks on the team who can support you in doing that work. Uh, so if you have a question like, you know, my branch is, is, is out of uh, uh, sync with master and these merge conflicts I got to figure out and, you know, can you help me walk through this or what have you? Um, you have those folks in place that, that are there and happy to, uh, to kind of help you essentially help them, you know, help each other, help the community uh, get work done. So that's that's really, uh, in my experience, in my opinion, the best way to get involved in, in Node.js is to start to work with uh, a team. And uh, they, they, they should be easy to get involved with, either looking through the calendar, you go to the Node.js org on GitHub and, and look through um, the repos and you'll see, you know, the internationalization team, You'll see the community committee. You'll see, um, you know, like I said, the the release team, the build working group, um, the the NAPI team, uh, modules. Modules actually maybe uh, retired or retiring. I can't recall. Uh, but my point is, you can see these groups in action. You can look at their meetings in the calendar. You can look at their issues, their pull requests, and things like that, and find ways to get involved. So that's what I that's what I recommend. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's kind of my my talk here. Um, definitely reach out to me if you have any questions. My DMs are open on Twitter, Joe underscore Sepi S E P I, and um, yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs>